The following message by Pastor Dennis Clark and Dr. Jennifer Clark is brought to you by Full Stature Ministries and its supporters. For more information about Full Stature Ministries, please visit forgive123.com. That's forgive123.com. This past week, there's been a couple songs, old songs that um, I learned a long time ago that had just been resonating in my spirit, and I don't think I'll sing through them all, <laughs> but uh, one was, As the Deer Pan is Forth, and I think it's um, Psalms 42 or 24, I can't remember offhand, but the, just the lyrics in that song, um, and also... Um, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one God. And I don't, I'll get to how those actually make sense together, but um, this is your free part. This is not part of the message. <laughs> this is what my dad would call the free part. Sometimes he preaches an entire sermon in the free part. But um, just, just going back and, and, and going through some of those the older songs, even hymns and whatnot, you you look at the the words and how much scripture is actually put into them. And some of the songs that you hear nowadays is just to tickle your ears or to, to get you excited and 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 everything. But and and a lot of them are aren't bad. They're just I'm not saying that they're bad. I'm just saying if you look back at some of these old things and just catch the heart of what God has actually written to us. It's amazing. And you look at, as the deer pants forth, the water for my soul longs after thee. Does, does, does it, though? I mean, when you listen to these lyrics, is it just a song? It's an old song. Everybody knows it. And you sing it, and you don't feel any, uh, any excitement in your spirit or anything. But you should. How come you don't? How come... I mean, does it really, when you wake up in the morning, do you, are, are you like dry in your spirit that you want to actually get to your word and, and read about him and what he has to say to you today? Do you want to get into a prayer with him, you know? Because that's what the psalmist was saying. I just think that I want... I know that everybody here wants more of God, and I want that for you guys as well. These are the things that I was excited to actually be able to, to speak today. I don't, I don't know if uh, a lot of you don't know me, and um, I don't. How many of you have heard my testimony? Almost half. I'm not going to, I don't think I'll, I'll go through my whole testimony, but if you want it, we, we have it available. <laughs> but I've been through a lot of rough stuff. I grew up in the church, but then I, I fell away from the Lord. I'm summing, up, summing this up really. Um, I got messed up with, with girls and, and, and um, all kinds of awful things in the world. And, and as he drew me out of that and placed me in this particular ministry. It only took me about two months of just doing, going through the 60-day challenge before I was complete, almost completely transformed. Um, you know, it, it's, a, it's a process. Forgiveness is not, but walking our Christian faith is a process. It's, it's something that you do every day. You, you want to practice and grow. Everything you do is, is a learning experience. Everything is school. But the phenomenal change that took place Basically, what happened was that I was able to begin to um, practice the presence of the Lord. So I'd wake up in the morning or in the evening when I'm praying and be able to drop down out of my head. I'm not, if everybody knows what drop down means, it means just get out of your head. It doesn't mean, you know, you don't think, but it, it means focus on Jesus in your heart. So when you drop down and focus on Jesus in your heart and you're laying in your bed and you're, you get into the presence of the Lord, 
or wherever you have, he taught me how to presence him, basically, is what it is. And I don't want to ever live without that. If, you know, that is like the ultimate, the ultimate, um, the, the ultimate awful thing that could ever happen to anybody is what happened to Satan as he was pulled out of the presence of the Lord, Lucifer was. That's like the ultimate worst case scenario for anybody in this room to ever happen to. I don't ever want that to happen. And it's like where the scripture says, take not thine Holy Spirit from thee. You know, it's because it's, it's such a vital part of us now. And I want it to be a vital part of you. And this, in this ministry, we, we learn how to presence the Lord. We, we learn how to practice the presence. We learn how to walk in the presence. We know how to release the presence, re- release forgiveness, release intercession, and where that comes from, where it's located, how it works. And a lot of ministries don't show that. And um, I'm not a copy of my father by any means. And I speak differently. I stand on different side of the pulpit. Um, but I'm no less excited about what God can do in us, through us. And it doesn't matter exactly. I, I heard this, this statement. I, I don't remember exactly who it was. Um, but it, it, was a, it, was a, it was a minister ministering out, and he was extremely tired, jet-lagged, and whatnot. Do you know that he said, do you know that it doesn't matter what I feel? That I could, I could minister to thousands of people, and it's actually going to work every, t- every time because it's not about me. It's about Christ and them doing the work. So if I lead them to Christ, just like I would lead you, and just like everybody in this pulpit would ever do in this ministry, no matter who it is, is we're going to point to, point to Christ. That he does the work in you, and it gets, it gets resolved, whatever the issue is. The God up in the heavens is a little bit too, it's used a lot, you know, have your presence fall down and, and all these things when we're singing. When in reality, yes, Jesus is in heaven, he's sitting at the right hand of God, but he's also in us and that's where we received him. And all throughout the scriptures, it's Christ in us, the hope of glory, Christ in us. And when we, re- we find out how to release him, we release the presence in the room. We, you know, he, it's not like he's, he's not God and he's not all powerful. He can't just do it himself. There's, there's a lot of sovereign things that he can do, but we also can allow him, we can lock him up in our, in our will, basically, is what happens. And if we don't yield and let him out, then, you know, we're, we're making actually everybody in the room suffer because we're not, we're not doing what Jesus wants us to do. And that's bring his kingdom on earth through us. Hmm? I wanted to, I know we, I, I guess I'm, I'll start the message now. That was your free part. It's funny, I um, was just thinking the other day, I'm having a hard time breathing because my belt's too tight. Something like that, right? You know, it's, what is it? It's the ninth month of the year, the beginning of the year, I said, I need, I'm going to lose 10 pounds this year. And you know what? I have about 15 to lose. So anyway, 15 more to go. That's all. Um, But if you have a a good wife that can cook, like, just unbelievable, I mean, you you don't understand, she can make a grilled cheese sandwich that you, like, you've never tasted before, let alone anything fancy. It's crazy. So it's kind of hard to, it's kind of hard to keep fit, but anyway. The, the title of the message today is, Who is Our God? 
there's been a lot of messages in, in the, just in the past, um, I want to say a couple months, that we did on discernment. We did like, he did like eight, he did like an eight-part series. I think it was eight, right? Six or eight on discernment. And then, then we, we had gone in and out of um, some purpose teachings on purpose and destiny. Last week was destiny. And the one thing that I wanted to re- reiterate through the um, discernment series was a part that God had laid on my heart, my heart this week about making a distinction. And I know that we talked. I know that He talked about this in the discernment series, but how to make a distinction in thoughts that who you know who knows that that you can have the, the devil shooting thoughts in your head. You could have you. Obviously, the flesh. But, and you could also have God, of course. But how do you know the difference? And the thing is, is sometimes if we don't talk about it and we don't pray with a, with a, a solid Christian friend or a pastor, we don't necessarily know automatically. And sometimes we accept things the way they are spoken in our heads. And they're not true. And I know that we talked about this before, but for some reason, the Lord wants me to talk about this again. Because probably some of us are thinking the wrong thoughts. And not that we have to undo those things with our willpower, but this is what we're we're going to do. A lot of the things that come against us and that we don't realize are the enemy itself or us is because we don't know God. Who is our God? Do you really know him as your provider, as your strength, as your healer? So I want to say, I'm going to go through a little bit of monotonous I am's because there's no better way to know God than who he actually says he is in the scriptures. I'm not going to go through all of them because there's probably hundreds of who he says he is, but I'll sum them, I'm going to read a summary. And what I want you to do in your seats is to make sure you're open in your spirit. If any of these things actually catch you, and they will, one of them, one of them is going to hit you and hit home. And that's where the Holy Spirit will want to develop. So you, can take, you could take months on these, each one of these. But if you learn to develop the knowing of this particular area of him, it's going to change your life. So what I basically is saying is if we know who God is, then we don't have to study the demonic realm and all these nasty things. Because when we hear a voice, we're going to be saying, well, that doesn't sound like the God that I know, right? How well do we know him, though? He says, I am one. I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am who I am. I am from everlasting to everlasting. I am the author and finisher of your faith. I am the creator of heaven and earth. I am able. How many people in here would just want to know how deep it could go if you just learned the presence of God, that he is able? In your prayer time, God, you are able. You are able. Just that. I am love. But we also know that God, God is love, but love is not God. Think about that. I am good. I am among you and in your midst. I am truth and true. I am your healer. I can attest to I am your healer just because of experience. Um, Ever since that I, I, I came out of my, my season of, of being away from him and going through the 60-day challenge and whatnot, I was completely healed of all my allergies, food allergies, every allergy that you could think of. 
And I wasn't even praying against my allergies. I wasn't praying for relief of my allergies. I just, it just happened. God did it because I was obedient in praying through my emotional issues. Who knows what he could do for you if he's your healer. I am glorified in the Son. I'm the Father. I am your witness. I am revealed for you. I am over all. I am merciful. I am faithful. I am wiser than men. I'm not the author of confusion, but I am the author of peace. Amen? We speak a lot about peace in here. Why? Because it's kingdom. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy. Righteousness being love and action. In the, uh, I am your sufficiency. How many, how many of us really need that? He's all sufficient for us. I am gracious and generous. I am slow to anger. I am highly exalted. I am working in you. I am invisible. I am the God who is coming. I am the righteous judge. I am savior of all people. I am unbound. I am the builder of all things. I am just. I am alive. I am a consuming fire. I am light. I am greater than your hearts. I am the God who is, who was, and who is to come. I am holy. I am almighty. I am your strength. Thank you, Jesus, for that. I am your song. I am jealous, and he's jealous for us. I am not a man. I am God of gods and Lord of lords, King of kings. I am great, mighty, and awesome. Amen. I like that one. I am not partial. I am your praise. I am with you in battle. I am a warrior. I am your dwelling place. I am your rock and refuge. I am God alone. And that's not even exhausting the search that you can do on the I am's. There's a ton. But how many of you really know him as even a fraction of those? How many of you want to? You know you can. It's, it's, it's not that we have to do anything except for allow him to be and to do in us. And we will experience each of those manifestations of himself in us. During one of the hardest times in my life, actually, it wasn't, looking back, it doesn't seem like it was very difficult, but we had a, a certain part at the beginning of our uh, my marriage to Gwen, that we had um, some issues. We kind of had a we kind of had a um, a lot, so to speak, that we needed to part from in order for the the rest of the vision of God to come to pass. I don't know if you know the story of Abraham Lot, that he was his brother, and he kind of it says until it until he was separated from him, the the promises of God really didn't fulf come fulfilled. Well, anyway, we kind of had that kind of a situation at the beginning of, of our, of our um, marriage to where that needed to happen in order for things to, to work out the way that God wanted them to work out for us. And um, at that time, I'll just, I wanted to share with you what I had written in my journal because this, this, is, this is me, and I, and I, I want you to, to realize that the, I'm a real person. I, you know, I'm, not, I'm not a stage, I'm not on a, you know, I'm not, making things up or anything. But this is just a page of my journal, maybe a day or two after some, some stuff had transpired that uh, was very difficult for me. This is who 
I know God is for me. Father God, I adore you. I look to you continually for I know in you that I have all that I need. I set all my affections toward you. I receive all my comfort from you. You are my rock and my shield. I choose to put my mind on things above. Look up, as in Psalm 121. You have made me and cleansed me from my unrighteousness and made me holy. You gave me a chance to be free in you. You shower affections towards me all day long as I seek your face in every situation in my life. More of you and less of me. As I decrease in this life, Father, please increase. I long for your presence, your touch, your wisdom and grace. I lay myself down as an act of my will. Everything in me, good and bad, I place it all at your feet, Jesus. You have rescued me from the pit and set my feet on a solid, wide place. You give me strength. I want to honor you in all that I do and say, God, I can't express how much I love you. You have done so much for me. You've changed me, you've rearranged me, you've torn me apart, and you've put me back together. Just in, I am here for you. Send me, meet with me, sup with me. I desperately need you. Thank you for all your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your admonition and your teaching. I thank you for your strength and your peace. Amen. My heart for you guys, I see you as as my dad's congregation, but my heart for you guys is that you start seeing the Lord like I do. If you don't already, If you, if you keep coming here and you keep getting the, 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 the information and you never let it sink down, you're not going to know the presence of the Lord like we need you to. <laughs> Everybody needs you to. You were here for a purpose. If you're breathing, you have purpose and meaning. And God wants to work through you to fulfill that purpose and meaning. If you're married, you have a unique design to carry out. Together, as a couple, you reflect a different way that, that, that God has for you both that nobody else can do, and you can't do separately on your own. I just want to encourage you guys to get to know God. Don't come here for a person. Don't come here for somebody that's speaking on the stage. You think my dad has a lot of charisma and revelation and everything. You just come to see the man. Don't come to see the man anywhere you go. Come for God. Test the words, test the spirit, and test the fruit. No matter where you go. These are the same things that you do for a, th- a thought that you, might not, that you might have coming into your head at night or when you're tired. You know, a lot of times the enemy likes to hit you when you're tired. It's the same way. If somebody's up here preaching, test the spirit. If it doesn't feel like the love of God is coming from me, you don't take it in. Don't just say, I don't feel it. I think he's angry. <laughs> I'm, I'm really not angry at all. If you, can't, if you can't feel that. I have a lot of love for you guys. I don't even know you. So I know that Christ in me wants me to express that. And that's why I prayed that loving intercession would come out to you. And that if you're open to it, that Christ in you will receive it. And you can be changed in your seat. The the scripture says, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God. And that's in 1 John 4, 1. Test the spirit. 
If it doesn't sound like the love of God in that voice in your head, it's not. Test the words if it's not scriptural. It's the same as if I'm speaking to you right now. If I'm speaking to you something, you know, all those I am's are in scripture. I have references for every single one of those that I read. But if you don't believe me, be like the Bereans. Search it out. It's a good thing. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for what? Doctrine, reproof, for correction, and instruction in righteousness. That's in 2 Timothy. Test the fruit. If it doesn't produce the fruit of the kingdom of God, what is the kingdom of God? Righteousness, peace, and joy. If, if what I'm speaking to you or if what you're hearing in your head, telling yourself, I'm just a nobody, I'm just no good, I can't do this, I can't get a job, I can't. If it doesn't line up with scripture, then it, do, it doesn't have good fruit, it doesn't have peace, it doesn't have righteousness, it doesn't have joy attached to it, then it's not from God. You can make that distinction. This is a good tree doesn't bear bad fruit and a bad tree doesn't bear good fruit. It's not made to confuse us. It's just one of those things that, that God t- helps us um, discern with. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy. Amen. But anyway, I hope you get something out of the message. I don't want God just to be something that you learn about. I want God to be somebody that you experience in a, in a daily walk with him. I don't, one of, the, one of the first messages that I heard when I, was, when I just came here, um, I saw it a little bit, I saw it about the same as my dad saw it. And he was talking about scattered charms. And I can't remember what verse that's in in, in the scriptures, but... When we look at our family, our job, our, our you know, and we, and we put them all in the same, even if we have a really nice car or house, and we put them all in the same line, we're, we're still talking about Jesus being in the same line as those things. I love Jesus. I love my car. I love my family. If they're all on that same line, what I saw was, was like a charm bracelet. I don't even know what they're called, Pandora bracelets or something. And, and they're, they're links, and each link has, you can put a little item on. And I kind of saw that in my mind's eye. And I was like, there's, there's family, there's friends, there's cars, there's, you know, there's houses, there's money. And, the, and there's Jesus hanging on one of those links. And it's just, that's not how he wants to be. He needs to be, instead of just Savior, he needs to be Lord and when we come to that conclusion, Lord is over all of those things. Lord gives all of those things or takes those things away from us depending on his good pleasure, <laughs> right? And that, that's the goal of Full Stature Ministries for Kingdom Life Church is that we make Jesus Lord, not just Savior. Savior denotes what he did for us. That, that was something he did. Lord is who he is. And so when we know that we're presencing Lord over our emotions, Lord over our will, and Lord over our mind, we know that we are in the presence of the Lord. He wants all three of those things. Just like in the, in, when they talk about the, the word noose, N-O-U-S, it, it, anywhere you see mind in the scriptures, it's, it's noose. And if you look it up in Thayer's or in Strong's, it denotes um, not just your intellect, but it also denotes your feelings and your will. So when you, th- when you, when you look at um, Renew Your Mind by reading the Word, it's actually all those things. It's, it's your mindset. It's your soul area. It's your mind, your will, and your emotions that need to be renewed by the reading of the Word. So anywhere you see mind in the scriptures is really awesome. It's mindset. It's, it's, it's a threefold thing that, that uh, even back then they knew that the mind, the, the thoughts and the feelings have, are, are connected. So that's exciting too. But um, I just wanted to wrap up. I know that I don't really actually know how long I spoke. 
because I don't have a clock up here like my dad usually does. But um, if we, if anybody wants ministry or anything like that at the end of the service, um, I'll be here. And if you wanted to put on some of the Revere's music, um, and then we'll we'll just close with that. If if anybody has any questions. I would like to hear not just questions, but statements of who do you believe God is to you? Who do you know that you know? What's your life? You know, what is God to you? Who, how is he real? And if you're not going to come up here and say it, <laughs> then I challenge you to do it throughout the week. Write it down in your journal on your, you know, when you're praying. Who is God who do I know God is? Because you know what? When you're in those times that you're in, dis- you're just crumbling and you're just and you're in stress. You do if you do like David did, and you remember, like, oh Lord, oh Lord, you know, when are you going to show your face? When am I, gonna, you know, when are you going to have mercy on me? How long am I going to go without, you know, wanting doing what your your will is and and seeing that, you know, form in my life or what you have for me? And and you, how many times in scriptures did you hear David complain like that? But in the process, he's always saying, but I remember when. At the end of that scripture, it's always, I recall, I stir myself up. I remember when you did this for me, and you're always my savior. You're always my rock. You're always my provider. You're always, you're always. And I challenge you to do that, because if you, if you learn who he is first, you won't have any problem discerning the enemy. You won't have any problem discerning flesh. If you know who he is, nobody's going to tell you different. And so I just wanted to, to share that, that, um, that message today for you guys and um, know that even though I don't know each one of your hearts, Jesus does, and he loves you to pieces with, with an unfailable love. And the thing is, is you can't do anything to get away from it. You can, you can purposely put space between you and the presence of the Lord, but you cannot run from his love. It's always there. Amen? Anybody? I want to hear somebody. I want to hear somebody say something, who, who, who the Lord is to them. We want to, we want to encourage. We want to be an encouragement to each other in the church, too. Not only is he my redeemer, he is a redeemer. And I asked him recently, I said, Lord, what's going on? What are you doing? He said, I am fixing all your mistakes. <laughs> That's good. One of, my, one of my favorite scriptures in the message says that every morning you'll, you'll hear me crying out, as I lay down the pieces of my life and I will wait for the fire to fall. If you do, if you give up, you lay down your mess, you give up your stuff. Just like in, in second, in second um, Samuel 2, 22, 21, 23, I think it was. Um, it's like I, I poured out all, all the pieces of my life before him and he instantly forgave me. It's like, he does the un- unbelievable for us when we are completely unbelievable and, re- and, and even in, in the world and, and took so many wrong turns, he's always there to take us out. And, and there's o- that's, that's one of those things that, I mean, I speak about on my, on my testimony, there's always a way out. He always gives us a way to, to get out. It doesn't maybe look good, it doesn't maybe feel good at the time, but there's always a way, there's always hope. And that's, that's key to who he is. If you, know, if you know him as your hope, there's always a way out. And um, if you haven't, and I'd really recommend getting my, my testimony DVD. I know you're gonna, there's a lot of new people here that haven't, haven't uh, heard about me and stuff. It's rough, I wouldn't wanna go through it with the children, you know, somebody that's 13 or younger. Um, but it's phenomenal what, what God can do. 
And I'll just, I'll just leave it at that. It's phenomenal what God can do with, with just a little bit of obedience. You step out because you're obedient and he will bless you and he will continue to give you grace and mercy and strength because of your obedience. I have a, I, could, I should have been dead. <laughs> I should have been dead. I could have. If I had remained in the way that I was living, I, I would have been dead right now. And instead, the day that I wanted to die the, the, the most, I, I had jumped out of a moving car, tried to. Years later, my, my daughter was born on that very same day. It is incredible what God can do when, when you, I don't want anybody in here to have to hit rock bottom in order to make a decision to get out. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. We can't think of all these things. We can't just use our intellect to come out of our messes that we make. He made us, he put us together. It's like, it's like we're, we're, he knitted us together, right? Like, a, like, a, like a, a tapestry or a garment. We are the ones that take the threads and tangle them all up. <laughs> but he's the only one that can undo the tangles. So I just, I just ask, Father, that, that you would be with this congregation as they go throughout their week. We just pray for, for everybody in here that if it's their job or if it's their spouse or if it's their children, anything that's, that, that's an issue in their heart, Father, Lord, that you would bring that to the surface so that they could deal with that so that they could be closer to you because you desire us. We, we desire you and you said that you will come running to us even if we just turn to you you will come running to us and meet us and father we we thank you for that we thank you for your love and mercy we thank you for the grace that empowers us to do good we thank you father for everything that you've given in this place of worship in a new building hopefully we thank you, Father, for, for even something that we don't have yet, and that's a new building. We thank you, Father, for things that you're going to be doing in our worship that we don't even know about yet. We thank you, Father, for everything that is on your, on your desire for us, for Full Stature Ministries, for Kingdom Life Church, for, for Team Academy. And we just thank you. We can't express enough how, how honored we are even to, to be in the position that I am standing in front of all these people in the audience. It's an honor for me to be up here, Father, and speak the word that you would want them to hear. And I thank you in Jesus' name. We just pray for Pastor, Pastor Dennis and Dr. Jen as they do their traveling and go through a, another module one, maybe module two for those folks up north. And we just ask, Lord, that you would give them ears to hear and, and the words to say. In Jesus' name. You've been listening to Pastor Dennis Clark and Dr. Jennifer Clark of Full Stature Ministries at Forgive123.com. Full Stature Ministries reserve all copyright protections under applicable law. Our copyright policy is available at our website, Forgive123.com. For more information about Full Stature Ministries and additional life-transforming materials, please visit Forgive123.com. Did you know that we have an online school available? Hi, I'm Pastor Jason Clark. We invite you to join our international community of almost a thousand students currently enrolled in a school like no other. Team Embassy equips believers to live in the spirit by giving them the how-to tools for wholeness intimacy with God, and living the abundant life Jesus promised us. You will learn how to heal emotional pain quickly and completely. You'll discover amazing keys to tap into the fruit of the Spirit and practice the presence of God as a lifestyle. Exciting courses available include the 60-day challenge, self-deliverance, healing rejection, codependency, intimate prayer, the functions of the human spirit, and many, many more. 
It's formatted so that you can take it with you on all your mobile devices. Sign up today at training.teamembassy.com. Be transformed. Become all God created you to be. You will never be the same.